yeah. I got 20 in my pocket, 30 in my wallet, 40 I'm a drink it. And the molly, I'ma pop it, propaganda, push a pencil, whip it, profit, sentimental kid with bars, you know I got it. Yeah, you know I got it. Yeah, you know I got it. I got 20 in my pocket. When you can't get booked in an actual comedy show, uh, you just gotta, and you wanna convince yourself that you believe in yourself, you just have to go rent the theater <laughs> and do the show that way. <laughs> yeah, you know I got it. I swear that I'm a total package. I'm a rapper, singer, and an actor. Had a habit tripping in my classes. Now I'm laughing, tripping in my classes. For Brendan Lemming! How's it going, everybody? Oh, man, you guys are excited to see me. I emailed all of you individually. I was like, please, God, come out to the show. The Cubs are playing. I need an audience. I already paid for the camera, people. <laughs> I need you here so bad. <laughs> oh, that's so accurate. Oh. <laughs> Every one of you is like, this guy owes me so bad I could be watching this game right now. <laughs> that's absolutely what could be happening. I know, you're stone-faced because it's totally true. I don't even know you. You're my coworker's son. <laughs> like... <laughs> I'm gonna get a weird email from a name I don't recognize. He's gonna be like, I need to get picked up at three in the morning. Don't tell my mom. <laughs> oh my God, you guys. It's been a year of me in Chicago. I've been in Chicago a year. It's awesome. I'm so happy, yeah. I'm super excited because before that, I lived in Northern Michigan, uh, which you knew from looking at my face already. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I lived in Northern Michigan. Uh, and why was I there? I was unemployed. Uh, <laughs> Which, when you're talking about Northern Michigan, is saying the same thing twice, by the way. <laughs> There's not a lot of opportunity up there. It was so ridiculous. I, uh, I was up there, I was unemployed. I was living in a house that was 140 years old that my parents owned. Uh, and it was a hard winter. It got really cold outside. And the only, the, the hottest that ever got on the interior of the house was 55 degrees. Because back in the 1870s, they only insulated homes with prayers and Cherokee hair. <laughs> It was really not a great situation. Uh, dating was really hard when I was up there. I downloaded Tinder, it's the only time I've ever done that. Uh, I downloaded Tinder and I set the radius to 200 miles. It was like maybe four matches. <laughs> not a great situation, I pulled it up. The first picture was just a photo of my cat. <laughs> I was like, I felt bad swiping left, so I swiped right and it was like, match. I was like, oh shit, this sucks because the one rule I had for this winter was don't fuck my cat. <laughs> Couldn't even do that. <laughs> She's been asking for it, okay? She walks around, no panties, little lemony asshole staring me in the face, come on. It's a cold winter, okay? It, it was her or the other cat or the dog. I think I made the right choice. That's a joke, you guys. It's just, <laughs> just made that up. <laughs> Didn't really happen. I promised Gloria, my girlfriend, that I just made that up. <laughs> oh, man. Dating in Chicago is kind of challenging too though. Uh, I was single when I first moved here and I, it's, it's challenging because, anybody here single by the way I should ask? Because yeah, a bunch of you guys. It's like challenging because here in Chicago there's a bunch of changing gender terms. This is not something that happened in Michigan. So like, I went out on this date and this girl told me, she described herself to me as gender fluid. Had you heard, have you guys heard that? I had not heard that before. Yeah. So I was like, what does that mean? And she goes, uh, to me it means that sometimes I feel like a woman and sometimes I feel like a man. Uh, and that took me right out of the date. Because <laughs> I was like, I've never felt like a man. Like, <laughs> I've never had a moment where I put on a suit and looked in the mirror and was like, this is who I am! Like, <laughs> never happened one time. <laughs> and so I was like, I gotta know what that feels like. <laughs> and she leaned back in her chair and she waxed poetic for a second and she was like, it feels like I'm gonna crush the world until it bleeds. Yeah, I was like, that is not what a man feels like. Okay, that is what a serial killer feels like. That is what Jeffrey Dahmer feels like. And then she like started talking about, she's like, no, I'm dismantling the male defined gender binary and crushing the patriarchy and like other things she read on Jezebel.com. And I was like, okay, look, lady, like I might agree with you, but that's a little preachy of you to say in an Applebee's. Right? <laughs> so then she got like really indignant the waiter brought the bill over and set it down. And I was like, by the way, are you feeling like a man right now? Uh, <laughs> I would really love to not have to pay this. 
totally <laughs> ridiculous, man. Northern Michigan, yeah. I, uh, I fell into a lot of Wikipedia holes when I lived up there, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Where you're like, oh, I might have a sore throat, and then you go to Wikipedia, and three hours later, you're like, a Mexican army was in France in the 1860s. Like, what? <laughs> How did that happen? I learned a lot of stuff about Abraham Lincoln that I want to tell you guys about. <laughs> yeah. First of all, we all know Abraham Lincoln, right? Eight top 40 hits. Like, best-selling book, TV show, and movie in the spring of 1863. First person to do that. Uh, six million followers on Twitter. We all know Abraham Lincoln. But get out your phones and prepare to Google this, because what I'm about to tell you totally happened. Okay? So back in his teens, Abraham Lincoln went to a neighboring town in rural Illinois, which was like maybe hundreds of miles away. There was only like 30 people in Illinois back then. He caused a ruckus, according to the local newspaper, by getting everybody in the town together in the town square. He knocked on everybody's door. Everybody gathered together. He got every round, and he was like, I am Abraham Lincoln, and I am the greatest wrestler <laughs> in all the Illinois territory, and I challenge your greatest wrestler. Somebody stepped out in the crowd, said, I take that challenge, Lincoln. Those two gentlemen locked horns for the better part of six and a half minutes, according to the local periodical. Until Lincoln grabbed that guy, pinned his ass to the ground. Somebody did a three count. He stood up and he said, Now you all know I'm Abraham Lincoln. And I'm the big buck of this lick. Direct quote from the local newspaper. And fucking Douglas thought he would beat this guy? He was dealing with the big buck of the lick. He pointed at a woman in the crowd, Mary Todd Lincoln, then just Mary Todd. He said, I'm making you my wife. Somebody said, That's the town crazy. He said, good, because I don't want to do that, do anything to please her luchador pussy. <laughs> like 80% of that story is true, by the way. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln is in, is in the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. I'm totally not making that up. That totally happened. Oh, uh, man. Northern Michigan, I don't know, a lot of places. I kind of lived a lot of places. I grew up in Metro Detroit, which was pretty cool. Yeah, moved out to Colorado. Hey. Uh, yeah, that was a big change moving from Detroit to Colorado. I didn't, uh, couldn't buy crack as easily. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I didn't get stabbed as much, which was really a bonus. Here's what's weird: moving from Detroit to Colorado, no black people in Colorado. Yeah, really weird. Really weird because, as far as I know, there's still crime. So, uh, which goes to show that stereotype is wrong. Shame on you for not laughing at that joke. Okay. Detroit, Colorado, you guys. Uh, it's weird, I have a new roommate in Chicago, which is great. Uh, he's a gay French lawyer, that's just what he is. He's a gay French lawyer. And I feel like uh, I might be committing a hate crime just by describing him accurately to people. <laughs> like I have to release a trigger warning before I say what he is. He's from France, uh, he has a boyfriend, and he practices law, he's a gay French lawyer. And I now have the cleanest apartment in Chicago. <laughs> It's so clean. I came home the other day and he was like, Brandon, can you please clean up what you left in the kitchen? And I was like, uh, I walk in the kitchen, there's one cup in the sink. I'm like, Maxime, you mean the cup? And he goes like, yes, I also agree it is a mess. <laughs> I'm a big fan of what he's doing in the world though. He's a member of a homosexual evangelical atheist group. Yeah, a homosexual evangelical atheist group. They're called Gay the Pray Away. Yeah. Yeah, and they're really out there undoing the Lord's work. It's really what I love about them. It's so interesting. I, uh, I, I guess that's fascinating. You know, if you're gay, you can't, that's just who you are. You know, it's, you can't change that about yourself. I think it's fascinating because we live in a time in which everybody, we're, we're used to so much control, you know, in our lives. And I think it's interesting that there's things about yourself you can't change. Like, one is what people call you, for example. So like, my name is Brendan Lemon, but for three months in middle school, that's not what anybody called me. Because I used to be shy, and I got on the bus, and this big kid came up to me, and he was like, hey, what's your name? And I mumbled, I said, Blendlin Lemlon. <laughs> so for three months, this guy called me Faggy McGiggles. <laughs> <laughs> Which is mean, because it's hilarious. <laughs> Every time he saw me, he's like, what's up, Faggy? How you doing, Mr. McGiggles? And I couldn't take it anymore. I was like, you know what, man? I'm done with this. I'm done with you telling me this. Okay, I stood up for myself. I beat him up. I beat him so bad, I put him in a wheelchair. 
from that day forward, they didn't call me Faggy McGiggles anymore. They called me the guy who beat up Drake. <laughs> okay. Because I went to Degrassi. <laughs> you guys. I fucking love that joke. I love that joke so much. I noticed there was a generational difference in the understanding of that joke, by the way. <laughs> you guys loved it. You guys were like, who the fuck is he talking about? Degrassi? What? Oh my gosh. I think it's so weird that something about yourself you can't change is what people call you. Like, my name is Brendan Lemon, but that doesn't even hold a candle to what my parents wanted to name me. Rafe Cortez. <laughs> that is so super true, by the way. Rafe Cortez. R-A-E-F-C-O-R-T-E-Z, Rafe Cortez, which makes zero sense because my family is terminally Irish. <laughs> <laughs> like, the names on my dad's side of the family would have been Timothy, Patrick, Michael, Daniel, Kaylee, another Timothy, and Rafe Cortez. <laughs> But here's what boggles my mind. Most dentists are named Dennis. You guys understand that? Like, people grow into their names. So, like, who would I have been if I had been Rafe Cortez? I've done a lot of thought. I think I would be the governor of a small Caribbean island. <laughs> I would be the cocaine king of the Caribbean, Rafe Cortez. That, or I would be the lawyer that defends a rapist. It's like one of the two. Uh, yeah. And I know, it's a good thing I didn't get named that. Like, it'd be like, if you've got a lacrosse team, Rafe Cortez is your man. <laughs> In any case, though, I think we can agree I would have massacred the Aztecs. I'm pretty sure that would have that happened. <laughs> that joke, by the way, brought to you by history. Spoiler alert, the bad guy's white. <laughs> history. You can't change history. That's the other thing you can't change. It's so interesting because... Uh, you know, I can't change my history. You can't change your history. Like, we're just, whatever we did, that's what we did. You know, you can't change it. I can't, <laughs> I can't change it. So, for example, uh, I was a goth in high school. <laughs> yeah. I can't, like, go into, I can't go back in time and, like, back to the future, that shit out of a photo. Like, that, <laughs> it's, that's for real. That's for forever. I can't get rid of that. I once wore a, a spike choker to my second hour French 2 class. Because <laughs> I thought I was Boku badass. <laughs> Turns out I was Boku a douchebag. <laughs> I once wore an outfit that was a black leather trench coat and a brown fedora. Uh, I wore it. And my parents watched me walk out the door in it. <laughs> and they said nothing to me. <laughs> I don't even think they really loved me. If I'm being totally honest. I'll tell you who they would have loved, Rafe Cortez. <laughs> that guy. People grow under their names, man. I think that's interesting. That's why I'm naming my first kid Billion Dollar Daddy. <laughs> Second kid, rocket ship pussy killer. First guy to fucking space! Third kid, Jeff. Every experiment needs a control. <laughs> He's gonna end up in middle management. I'll be like, that turned out right. <laughs> oh man, so interesting. Um, I think it's interesting that I got a French roommate because I used to live in France. Has anybody here been to Paris, by the way? Been to France, been to Paris, yeah. Paris is pretty cool. It's beautiful, it's amazing, it's also disgusting. It's kind of like, <laughs> like the world's most beautiful outdoor urinal. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so weird, I went over there and somebody was like, uh, like my French friends were super excited to see me. They were like, Brendan, we're going to drink some beers, we're going to fuck some bitches, it's going to be amazing, man! And then like my German friends were super excited to see me, they were like, Brendan, <laughs> it's going to be a great time. <laughs> I was like, calm down, Hans. <laughs> Somebody, when I was over there, they were like, Brendan, you gotta go see German stand-up comedy. What? <laughs> <laughs> There's Germans with a sense of humor? Like, let's, let's start there. <laughs> the second thing that totally blew my mind is like, I couldn't even imagine what a German person telling the simplest joke would even look like. <laughs> like, like how, why did the chick across the road, they'd be like, so, that is a foul. Uh, <laughs> and he's attempting to traverse the autobahn. Then there's the second man, and he says to the first man, but for what reason? <laughs> for what reason is this game bird attempting to cross the road? And then the first man responds, very easy, my friend, the other side is Poland! <laughs> <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Or like, or like a knock-knock joke. You gotta be like, yeah, there's a man, he's in a room, and there's a rapping on the door. <laughs> he says, but who goes there? The answer comes, the SS. He goes, the SS who? The SS of questions! <laughs> it's not even clever. That 
It's not even a clever joke. <laughs> but there's, here's the thing that's really amazing. There's only, uh, there are like classic English bits. They're classic comedy bits that could only take place in English. Like who's on first? Because if two Germans had that conversation, they would have gotten to the bottom of it with like the speed and efficiency of two mechanical engineers. Uh. <laughs> so they could be like, Hans, I see you are coaching the baseball team. Who is the man on first base? Yes. Oh, yes is the name of the man on first base? Ah, no, 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 no. We are having a miscommunication, my friend. <laughs> no, you see, you are misconstruing the name of the man for the common query of the name of the person. <laughs> uh, what a humorous situation this might have been. <laughs> Well, better go back to drawing engine parts. <laughs> it's a good thing that they just make beer, because if, <laughs> if they tried to do anything with humor, it would not work. <laughs> uh, I, was, I, I went to a, a few places this year. I went to Omaha, Nebraska, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, has anybody been to Omaha, by the way? Yeah. That's one woo, that's how entertaining Omaha is, by the way. <laughs> it's a cool place, but I kind of felt like when I was there, the tagline for advertising for Omaha should have just been like, Omaha, it exists. <laughs> like, it was just kind of, I don't know, it was okay. But I was at the airport, I gotta tell you guys about this. I was at the airport in Omaha, and I was flying back, and something happened that totally is ridiculous, okay? I was sitting, I was waiting for the, the plane to fly back. I was just sitting in the airport, and apropos to nothing, Suddenly, over the PA system, it goes, boop, 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 ayo, 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 boop, boop. And I like freaked out. I jumped up and I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? I'm looking around. We're all freaking out. Do you know what's happening? Do I know? Do you know? Nobody knows what's happening. What's happening? And then just as suddenly as it had started, it stopped. And you could hear a pin drop. And then it goes, can we get a janitor to gate C37? <laughs> can we get a janitor to gate C37? We've had a child that's had an accident. And I was like, fucking really, airport? <laughs> That is the goddamn noise that you chose to let me know you needed a janitor. <laughs> Could you have chosen something that, I don't know, doesn't make me think that airborne anthrax is just wafting yeah. through the terminal? Yeah. Here's the best part, I was disappointed. Uh, yeah. I was like, oh, we're all alive now. <laughs> this is a story that almost happened. <laughs> but somebody did bring a weapon of mass destruction to the airport that day, did you catch it? That's right, a baby. Yeah. Don't believe me? Let's do some quick mental math. Over the last hundred years, which has ruined more lives, newborns or nuclear bombs? Uh, yeah. uh, All I'm saying is that there's not a uh, building in every city you can get rid of a nuclear bomb. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. You know like abortion jokes? They kill every time. Uh. Damn! <laughs> Cornered ya! <laughs> don't, do not applaud that. Uh. <laughs> oh man, but seriously, I don't, does anybody here have kids by the way? Uh, yeah, good. I mean, by kids, I should say not like, wait, not grown children. I mean like baby children. Yeah. Why would you bring them on an airplane? They're this big. Ship them. <laughs> and in case you don't believe me, in case you think I'm being too harsh, they called on these two kids who were right next to me, okay, at the next gate, and they were raising all kinds of hell like two little Ted Bundys, okay? Like one of them ran up to an old man that was sitting across from me, Okay, my hand to God, this happened, by the way. Ran up to him, grabbed a candy bar out of his hand, bit it, put it back. <laughs> Maintained eye contact the whole time. That is some stone cold shit. And that was the little girl. <laughs> the little boy, her brother, I'm trying to take a nap. He runs up to me and like tries to tie my shoelaces together while I'm sleeping. Like Dennis the Menace, right? Yeah, and he gets up, I'm like, get out of here. He runs away, he stops like eight paces out, turns around and goes, <laughs> right back at me. Yeah. I'm like, where are their parents? Over there, incapacitated with joy. He's not fucking up their lives for five minutes. Uh. I, like, I like look over at the mom and I motion to the kid. And she like looks at me and she shrugs. She shrugs. I'm like, okay, this, is th this isn't the weather. This isn't a Wi-Fi connection that isn't working. Yeah. All right? This isn't something that you can literally do nothing about. This is your kid. Hit him. Hit him. <laughs> Look, uh, yeah, right? <laughs> it's amazing because white audiences hate this joke. <laughs> Black audiences love this joke. 
And I want to be clear with you guys, I am not advocating beating children, okay? I'm advocating beating that child. <laughs> Because if you're sitting there going, you shouldn't hit children, you forgot a timeless truth, okay? Assholes come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, Sometimes little psycho kids. And if you don't hit them now, they'll grow up and run for Republican office. In <laughs> so, hit that kid while you can. It's super bad, man. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I came out to my parents this year. That was kind of big, came out to them. Just want to go yeah. let you guys know. Yeah. Came out to them. Yeah. I uh, thought they had to know the truth. We sat them down. I was like, Mom and Dad, I'm straight. <laughs> and I looked up and just saw appointment in my dad's eyes. Oh. Yeah. My mom was sad, though. She was like, Brendan, we looked forward to a really well-decorated and controversial wedding. <laughs> <laughs> and so many Asian grandchildren, Brenda. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> So they did what a lot of straight parents do, they owned me. <laughs> Just had to know that their son was a lousy pussy hound. <laughs> uh, I'm in a relationship, that's really great. That's really exciting, I'm really happy about that. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool, you can applaud it. Okay, that applaud feels, applause feels condescending, admittedly. Like, like okay, <laughs> it's not like I was autistic, all right? I got this. I'm a normal person. Oh, shit. Right. This is being recorded. <laughs> oh, man. No, I'm really happy. It's, it's worthy of applause, because I'm really happy, and she's wonderful. We do have kind of a problem, though, in our relationship, which is that she likes to, she likes to fuck more than I like to fuck. That's the problem. Uh, and I know that's a high-quality problem. Uh, <laughs> But it's still a problem because like I'll come home. Like, believe me, let me say this. 30 year old or 13 year old Brendan is thrilled about this, okay? But 30 year old Brendan is like, I just got home from work. Okay. <laughs> like I'll get home and she's like, Can I suck your dick? And I'm like, I haven't even seen Stranger Things yet. <laughs> okay, I gotta catch up on my shows. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Like she I, I'm just really terrified because like it's already like this. And uh, she's 26 years old. Her sexual, sexual peak is in four years. I'm 30, mine was 14 years ago. <laughs> like there is a storm of brewing, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> like I'm so worried because we live two blocks from a high school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Their lacrosse team is not going to states anymore. Right? <laughs> They're done, what happened? We used to be contenders. Yeah, Gloria turned 30, that's what happened. <laughs> So ridiculous. I don't know, man. She's kind of kinky. I guess I'm into that. We, uh, she was like, I want you to buy me a collar. So we went to the store to go do that. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe some of you are into that. I, it's new to me. So we went to the store and uh, we were checking out all these collars and she was getting really turned on. She's like, Brendan, I can't wait to get you home. Can't wait to get the, undo your zipper, get that dick out. I was very uncomfortable. <laughs> I was very uncomfortable. The cashier saw that. And she was like, hey, don't worry about it. That happens all the time here at PetSmart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just scared, man. I'm scared, like, we'll finish. We'll finish, like, or I'll finish, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, was that good for you, babe? And she's like, is that it? Are you serious? You want me to go to the neighbor's house and knock on the door? And that's a real threat, because we have an open relationship. Which she is way better fitting from more than I am, by the way. <laughs> I thought I was coming out on top of that deal. Turns out her on bottom a bunch of times. <laughs> oh, man. It's so bad. Like, I'm doing this. I do comedy a lot. She's out at music festivals. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'll get a text message. She's like, I don't even know who gave me drugs. I'm like, take a photo. We'll Google image it later. We'll know who the father is. Like, <laughs> Thanks, technology. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Like, it's just rough. Like, she, uh, she wanted to, I know I'm saying it's rough. You're not gonna totally believe it at all from the story I'm about to tell you. She was like, do you wanna have a threesome? I was like, yeah, that sounds awesome. I was very excited about that. What man wouldn't be, right? We go out to the bar, she finds a girl, this moon-faced girl she was attracted to, right? Within four minutes, she had that girl hooked, okay? Which was fast enough to make me realize that in this relationship, I'm the option. <laughs> <laughs> she could do that any time she wanted. And like for a second though, that was a very sweet thought. I was like, oh my gosh, she's with me because she chooses to be. Like she, she has other options. She, she could do this anytime she wanted. 
And it was in the middle of that thought that I realized I'd lost track of her in that bar. <laughs> her and that girl had disappeared. I was like, took her looking around for 20 minutes. Where were they? At the bar getting a bunch of guys to buy them shots like superheroes. Uh. <laughs> so I found her, she grabbed me. She goes, you wanna take this slut home? And in that moment, I realized I was out of my depth. <laughs> yeah, I had not prepared for game day. <laughs> it's not something I was ready to do. So we leave, she get back to her apartment, her and this girl whose name I still don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, make out with her. So I grab her and make out with her. My girlfriend grabs me, we make out. The two of them start making out, and they keep making out. <laughs> then they move to the end of my bed <laughs> and never came back. Yeah. That's, that's the story <laughs> of the threesome. I didn't have a threesome. My girlfriend just fucked a girl I kissed once. That's, <laughs> that's that story. And it was really weird because I am like not at all into lesbian porn, but I'm like really into like cuckold porn. <laughs> so I had the weirdest boner like ever. <laughs> yeah, I came so hard I forgot I was crying. That's the end of that story. <laughs> I'm really worried about our world. I can see why. <laughs> I'm really worried about our world, man, uh, because I think not, it's not necessarily the election, just a couple of things, but the one that's really kind of bothering me is uh, artisan donuts. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about, artisan donuts? Yeah, there was like these really nice donut places that opened up, and I was like, really? This is what we're doing with our money? <laughs> we're not digging wells in Africa, we're not helping the homeless. We're buying $6 donuts. <laughs> I walked into this place and the interior was all masculine tone woods. Like a Lord's shooting room in England. <laughs> like, I like I need ambiance to enjoy a donut. <laughs> like I walked in and there was a display case of one example of every donut they had, like a jeweler. <laughs> and I was like, uh, how much are these donuts? And the lady behind the counter was like $6. And I was like, are you serious? I could get six donuts at Dunkin' Donuts for that much. And she goes, these are six times better. And I was like, there is no way these are 600% better than any donut I could get at Dunkin' Donuts. And she goes, try them. She threw down the gauntlet. And I said, I'll have your best donut. And she goes, they're all the best. Uh. <laughs> like, I didn't realize I was suddenly in a donut western. Like, <laughs> so I'll go, I'll take the one people order most. And she goes, maple bacon. She goes back into the back of the place, comes out with a donut on a pillow. <laughs> She's held it in space before me. She goes, aren't you gonna Instagram it? <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not gonna Instagram it. And I was like, you know what, I'm tired of this. I'm not doing this. And I left that store, I walked out. Because here's the thing, if you're spending $6 on a donut, you're literally saying that donut is worth more than a sweatshop worker's salary. Oh. Yeah, you're part of the problem, audience. <laughs> You all groaned at that. That is a groan of tacit complicity. <laughs> That's just the truth. I couldn't stand it. I was like, this is how we're gonna spend our money? So I did, I firebombed that place. I Instagrammed that. It just got, I'm just saying I'm worried about the, way, the place the world's going to. Cause something happened over the summer that's like really got me worried, really bothered me. And this is what it was. I was at Pride, you know the Pride rally? in Chicago, I was here, it was like super awesome. I was walking down the street, but I heard something that totally screwed me up. It's got me, for, for months it's got me screwed up. I'm walking through Pride, and at the edge of my earshot, I heard somebody say, there are too many N-words in Lakeview. That's right. But here's the thing, that's exactly what they said. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? They did not use the word the term N-word refers to, they used the term N-word. <laughs> There are too many N-words in Lakeview. And I was like, I did not realize until that moment that you could be PC and racist at the same time. <laughs> I didn't know that was a possibility. <laughs> and here's the thing, like, what audience are you trying to please, okay? Because progressives are like, dude, are you a fucking racist? And racists are like, dude, are you even a fucking racist? <laughs> like, I totally don't understand it. Also, it's a pride rally, okay? Not a white pride rally. <laughs> I think maybe you got the wrong date. <laughs> this stuff just kind of bothers me because like, I, I think I've been feeling this way my whole life. Like I've been feeling that the world is always kind of 
It's not, it's not going in a good place. I think I gave up on it when I was 17 years old because I remember exactly the moment that it happened. I was in my second hour French 2 class. <laughs> wearing a spike choker. Brown fedora, black jacket. You remember me. I had just fought Drake weeks before. I was sitting there. We had a project. It was like a term project. You know what I mean? Like you had to finish it in order to complete the entire class. And uh, there was a girl who didn't do it. Her name was Kayla Powers. That's her real name, so I hope she uh, <laughs> is watching this. <laughs> this could be a lawsuit. <laughs> Kayla Powers, she didn't do the project. I did the project. I turned it in. She didn't do it. And I remember thinking, uh, if I didn't do it, I would have totally... I would have totally failed the class. But at the end of class, the teacher asked her over to his desk, and I didn't hear their conversation, but I saw their body language. And in that moment, I knew she was gonna get away with this. She would get away with it. And nothing like under the table happened. Like it wasn't like she was gonna blow him in his office after this or anything like that. It was like she was just cute enough and serious enough that she was gonna get away with it, right? Like, and in that moment, I knew that would always happen to her. And we had two different worlds. There was my world, there's your world, and then there's her world, where she can always get away with that. And then you're sitting there thinking, like, Brendan, that can't po be possible. Like, poetic justice has to exist somewhere in the universe, right? Like, she's going to have to have a come-to-Jesus moment years later when she's in college and, like, getting her second abortion, and she's, like, on drugs and calling her dad at 2 a.m. And she's like, Daddy, come and pick me up. And he's like, no, you've had enough chances, or, like, something like this. No, nothing like that happened. The next time I saw her, I ran into her 10 years later in Paris, France, where she was, get this, engaged to a Dutch male model. Yeah whose family owned a chain of successful hotels in Europe. Here's the best part, he was the nicest guy I ever met. He was so nice. He was like, ah, Brandon, you could stay at a hotel anytime. I'm like, shut the fuck up, Dieter. You're a fucking asshole. There are child soldiers, Dieter. And here's the thing, man. There's no point in the universe. Trump's gonna be president. We're all gonna go down together. Take care. Have a good night. Yeah, these lyrics stay with your hella. I'm iller than the other guy in the mirror. I'm weirder than Al. Killing the shit with my pals. Robbing these lame. Smoking the shit with my pal. I'm in my best butt. Robbing these lame dumb. Mobbing is so fun. I am so cold. I am frozen. They won't leave me alone. I am flowing off of the dome. I am going out of my zone. Come for a shout out to Saba. I'm the best. Here to defeat the rest. Kill him and reap the stress. Answer to the rest. I'm a little bit of an idiot. I'm illiterate. Now I'm drunk. Kind of smoke. I got 20 in my pocket. 30 in my wallet. 30 in my wallet. 40 in my drinking.